and welcome to my shop. I get asked a lot about grinding primary bevels or what do you do if you get a really bad nick in a blade or a chisel. So let me tell you a little bit about my setup, what I like, what I don't like. You don't need to spend a lot of money on a grinder, but you do need a good tool rest. So this, what I did with this is I got rid of the grind, the tool rest, and I added Wolverine, uh, it's called a uh, uh, Wolverine jig made by One Way. I sell them on my site just this, a base plate and a platform assembly. Now they make, they make a unit that's also for uh, guys that are turning lathe chisels, but I didn't need that. So the base plate fastens to the table that the grinder is attached to, so you can modify it to fit any grinder. Everything operates off a cam, so it locks down tight and easy. Same thing on the uh, platform assembly. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in there and I'm going to dress my wheel. I just happen to have another one over here, so when you buy it, you just get this one. So I want the wheel to be as true as possible, and I also want the face to be fairly aggressive so that it'll cut fast. People worry about uh, using a bench grinder fear, for fear they're going to burn the steel. But you can avoid that, or at least you can lessen that, by using a really coarse wheel and keeping it nice and clean, meaning not clogged up, and modifying the amount of pressure you use. So we'll turn it on. There's two different wheel dressers you can get. You want to have close support for the uh, tool you're using. This one is inexpensive. It just has uh, an industrial diamond bedded on there. And that'll go in and help to true the stone. I like to knock the corners off the outside of the wheel. Now the problem I find with this is it makes the course, the face of the uh, stone uh, too smooth. So this is another style of wheel dresser you can buy. They're not very expensive and it has replaceable wheels. I'm getting down on mine. But that'll go in and that'll really open up. And that'll make that wheel cut much faster. And I like to use as coarse a wheel as you can find. As I said, the coarser the wheel, the faster it'll cut, and the cooler it'll cut as long as you're not applying too much pressure. All right, so the wheel's ready to go. Now I want to copy the angle that was on here, and on a bench plane, typically you're dealing with uh, 45, uh, a 25 degree primary bevel. So it's just a matter of going in and setting this up to the same bevel that you already had on there. And you can use a protractor like this to go in there and check your angle once you get started or to see if you're anywhere near the 25 before you start. Now I'll raise this up and this handle you just simply pull it out, it's spring loaded and move it to wherever you want so that you can get the range that you need. Get that in nice and close. Actually my wheel's wearing down, that's as close as I can get right now. Let's wait for that to slow down. This is actually a high angle blade that I made. That's why there's a really pronounced back bevel on the back, but I still need to get this cleaned up. So, I'm going to move for a minute when I get down here. I just go in and I eyeball that until the blade touches the grinding wheel at close to the same angle that I had on there. You want to be hitting about in the middle, and I'm hitting down here at the bottom. So I need to bring that down just a little bit. Uh, I'm still there at the bottom. A little bit more. Just spin it by hand and see where it's making contact. It's up a little bit higher, but still needs to come down a little bit more. Okay, so there's my contact right there, and that's good. So make sure everything is tight. Turn this on. Now you want to keep the tool tight to the rest. If you allow it to ride up off the rest as you go into the wheel, you're going to get multiple facets on there. So I keep it tight. There's lots of surface contact, which simply means that the, this nice big tool rest will act as a great heat sink to help keep the tool or the blade cool while you're sharpening. If not, you can have a little pot of water there that you can dip it in as it gets too hot. I keep my fingers up fairly close and I can tell if it's getting too hot. I always like to be moving laterally before I engage the blade, the stone, and I also like to leave while I'm still moving laterally. And then I'll come back and it's 
get this forth and back motion. Very light pressure. Occasionally stop and check and see your progress. And I'm keeping that fairly, fairly consistent with what it was. You can't be in a hurry. You are, that's when you start to overheat and you risk burning the seal. Now I don't pull away very far, that way I know I'm I'm not having to move it very much to re-engage with the stone. And by making that wheel so it's slightly crowned, I know that my contact point is somewhere near the middle. That way if I need to come in here and, and make a little adjustment, if it's slightly out of square, I want to just work that one corner. I know my contact point is right there so I can come in and just work that one area. And what I do is I just gradually taper off so that I'm not grinding back here. I'm just working down this one high corner. Keep turning it around and checking it. And you get it back to being where you want it. And you just go in and work this until you're finished. Now, if I'm re-grinding just to shorten my secondary bevel, and that's my primary reason for going in here and redoing this main bevel. As your secondary bevel gets wider and wider with successive sharpenings on the hand stones, it just means you're having to move too much material. So what I do, in, I go in and I shorten this little wee tiny secondary bevel until it's just a little whisper of a thing, and then I can go back to my regular honing, which really speeds things up. Light pressure. Don't be in a hurry. And it, it, it shouldn't get so hot that you can't hold it. If it does, you can just sit there and press it against the, the uh, tool rest for a second, and that'll draw the heat out of it. Now, when you're doing a chisel, Bob, you're going to encounter with chisels is you don't have the same amount of surface area as you do with a plane blade. So this heat sink's not gonna work nearly as well. So what I do with a chisel is I almost, almost always have a little can of water so I can just dip it as it starts to overheat. But same process, being move, moving laterally as you engage, disengage while you're still moving laterally, and then come back and just work it until you get it straight, square with the side. And if you have to work one corner and the other, what you can do, especially on something narrow like this, if this corner was high, I would simply tilt my chisel a little bit like this and do that same parallel movement, but having the chisel on a slight of angle so I can work away that high corner. Real easy. Uh, wear your safety glasses. That's probably the only safety precaution you need to worry about. It's a pretty safe tool otherwise. And remember to get a really coarse wheel. A coarse wheel cuts faster, cuts cooler. There you go. See ya.